win the game. I guarantee. Is this fun or what? This is why you left all that boy. Here we go. <laughs> I'm usually a percentage guy. Now, every once in a while, throughout the percentages, when I have a gut feeling. It's fourth down and nine, and evidently Mike Shanahan's going to roll the dice. People say that you're a little bit crazy to go for as many fourth downs as you do. Fourth and nine, plumber the shotgun. That's a situation. I feel even though it's a risk, it's a risk in our favor. The right side on pass is going to be caught, and a gamble touchdown. And the gamble by Mike Shanahan pays off. Oh, Mike Shanahan, born in uh, Oak Park, Illinois, raised in Franklin Park and Schiller Park. My mom, housewife, my dad, electrician. You know, I had four sisters and a brother, and you know, so six kids in the family. My uh, mom wanted me to be a fireman or a policeman. My dad told me to go to school. I was thinking about being a physical education teacher. I was always influenced by uh, my coaches when I was young, you know, baseball, football, basketball. I had a lot of respect for them. You know, I wanted to coach at a young age. I don't know if it was fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, but I enjoyed that environment. And you know, a lot of my parents know that someday I would, I would like to coach. And, you know, I really didn't know what level, but, you know, those coaches did have a big influence on my life. And I knew someday I wanted to do it. I think everybody looks forward to their high school career and give them a chance to get a scholarship or go into college. And, you know, when I was involved with football, our football coach switched to the triple option. As a player, I was definitely more of a run-oriented quarterback than I was a throwing quarterback. Ball feels great to a quarterback. A little like sticky. It. When I look back, there's no way I was going to be a pro football player. You don't think with my, uh, with my background, I, I would know that. <laughs> <laughs> With my pro career, you're trying to tell me? I was definitely an overachiever that enjoyed pl playing the game. I did not have the athletic ability to play it uh, past college football. I was uh, looking at a few schools in Illinois. Then I was offered a couple half scholarships. When I visited Eastern Illinois, they offered me a full scholarship, so I knew I was going there regardless uh, of the program. And it was, a, it was a school at that time that didn't have a lot of success. I think they had like I don't know, 17 seasons in a row without a winning record, so you know, it was a challenge. That was my sophomore year in college. It was a Kawasaki 500. My friend was driving the bike at that time, and, uh, and somebody hit us right in the middle of an intersection, and uh, unfortunately he died. His name was Mickey Bertini. And I, I was flown, in fact, about 150 feet in the air. We were going about 55 miles an hour. They were making a left-hand turn right into us, and I was very fortunate that I came away with a sprained ankle. It was just an option in spring ball. Got hit in the side, knocked the wind out of me. I, I didn't think it was, it was anything really bad. When I went back to my apartment, I wasn't feeling very good. And when, I, when my roommates came in, I'd vomited uh, three different times and I filled three different sinks. So I knew there was something uh, drastically wrong. Did not know, you know, the extent of the injury, but I did go to the hospital. They called the ambulance and uh, they did exploratory surgery. And I had split the kidney in half. They did receive last rites. My heart stopped beating for over 30 seconds and my dad made the drive uh, down to Easter and when he was coming in the hospital and my, the priest was going out, he says, hey, it doesn't look good, so expect the worst. Obviously everything turned out all right, but they told me that I couldn't play football anymore. So what it did, it, you know, it shut one door from playing and opened up another door for coaching. And so I started coaching a couple years earlier than I was planning on coaching, so maybe in, in a way it was a blessing. Great day to be alive. Go kick their ass. So I was a graduate assistant for two years, 73, 74. And then I went to University of Oklahoma. I wasn't going to graduate school, but I was kind of running a dormitory with another friend named Gerald O'Dell. And we kind of would do anything just to kind of be involved with a program like University of Oklahoma. So we kind of helped with the, you know, with the junior varsity team, the freshman team. And then I was there for 75, 76 with Barry Switzer and 75, we had won a national championship, and it was a great experience to me to get to the Division I level. I got a job in Northern Arizona uh, the next year. It was a different style offense, more of a passing offense, so I had the background of, you know, Eastern for a couple of years, and Oklahoma to Wishbone with a run-oriented offense, so when I got with Joe Salem in Northern Arizona, he was more of the California, West Coast, Stanford, using that type of attack, so after the end of the year, I went back to my alma mater, 
I was interviewed for the head coaching job at Eastern Illinois. I did not get the job, but Daryl Mudra got the job and offered me the offensive coordinator's job. There was a guy that uh, had some great foresight and great leadership skills and Daryl to take a team that was 1-10 and 10 to 12-2 and two win a national championship. So it kind of gives you an idea of what type of guy he was as a head coach. And then the next year I got an opportunity to go back with uh, Joe Salem. He got the head coaching job at the University of Minnesota, so I was hired as the offensive coordinator there. And it was a great opportunity because I was very young at that time. And to get a coordinator's job at Division One level was a little bit unusual. And we kind of ran the run and shoot offense the one year I was at the University of Minnesota. And I got the coordinator's job at the uh, University of Florida. And I was there for four years. And we went from a run-oriented offense to a throwing offense and really enjoyed my stay there. I knew just by talking to different people to get the experience that I needed, I had to go to different places. And I knew it was going to be a lot of moving around, but I had a wife that was very supportive. We moved early where the kids were young, and it was something that I felt to get to where I wanted to get to. Uh, you know, I had to make those moves and make them early. And I, we were lucky enough to win. So when you do win, you know, you've got a chance to advance your career. And I was very fortunate every place that we were at, we were able to win and give you some opportunities. Is that Mike Quick? Yeah. He does their radio. Does he? Yeah. He was a great player, boy. Yeah. I almost coached him at uh, Philadelphia. Oh, really? Yeah, I was contemplating rather go to Philadelphia or come here when I first started coaching. That right. Yeah. After my fourth year at uh, Florida, I had gotten a call from Philly. Marion Campbell was the head coach. And and I went up there and interviewed before I interviewed at Denver. And the reason why I wound up going to Denver is, uh, you know, Dan had told me that if I came to Denver, not only could I, could I be the receiver coach, but he wanted to hire a quarterback coach until the following year. So if I proved to him that uh, I could coach the quarterbacks, then I could have the quarterback job as well as the receiver coach. And that was a deciding factor for me to uh, go to Denver. Okay, I'm gonna let Pat do this one. Everybody gets a game ball. Hey, hey! So to come into that environment and coach a guy like John going into his second year, on one, on one. Ready? I knew it was quite an opportunity for me. You know, I tried to you know, study as much as I possibly could the pro game, and, and I'm not sure I was going to teach him pro football. We're going to learn together. When I came in, I was 31 years old. I knew John was about 24, 25 at that time, so I was fairly young. We had a good relationship. The thing that uh, we were able to do is kind of grow together. Are 98 yards away from where they need to go. Still five minutes to go, but they need something out of this drive. They hadn't been talking about John, you know, four years at Stanford and never went to a bowl game. And then all of a sudden, he's in Denver and it's fourth year. He's never won a playoff game. So, you know, people saying, hey, you can't, you know, you can't win a playoff and you can't get to the Super Bowl. Da 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 da. All of a sudden, the pressure was so great on him and he performed so well under that pressure. To actually get that drive in Cleveland and actually get to the Super Bowl was something that was very special. The snap to Elway, the look, the throw, touchdown to Mark Jackson, 98 and a half yard drive. You were just happy to be a part of that type of environment. Love you. The big significance of that game to me was we actually are going to the Super Bowl. Well, we lost three in four years, and not only did we get beat, we got embarrassed. Getting beaten the way we did it was a situation where a lot of people didn't want us to go back to the Super Bowl. And then, of course, John, you know, yeah, you can get us to the Super Bowl, but you can't win the big one. You know, so that went on for a long time. You get to the Super Bowl, you got to have a pretty darn good football team or you're not going to win it. We were pretty good, but we weren't on the level of some of those other teams. I don't know, you know, if you're ever ready, you know, you learn on the job. But it was a little interesting because it was the first time that Al had ever hired anybody outside the greater organization. You know, we started Jay Schrader, just came from Washington, and we really started out cold. Schrader on the drop, here comes the blitz, there he goes! 
make some plays in the second half, got a little momentum, and wound up winning the game. The fun part about it is, you know, I still knew some of the scheme, so there was a certain blitz that we had and a guy kind of holding off because we knew, you know, what their hot was. And as soon as John took the interception, he looked over to me and flipped me off during the middle of the game, so he wasn't too competitive. wound up being 7-9 the first year and we actually played for the AFC West championship in the last game of the year we're playing Seattle and we lost that game and it was uh, a chance actually to win the division we started out the second year one and three and, you know Al just felt like hey I got to go a different direction different philosophy different way of doing things so Al's a guy that has a philosophy and everything you know he's been in football for a long time and he knows what he wants and I think I was a product of my environment. I knew what I wanted, so yeah, there, there was a clash there. I had a three-year contract, and I was fired after a year and four games. We went from five and ten to seven and nine, and I sort of thought we were really making some improvement, but it was his decision to let me go. Well, I got fired after the fourth game, and, and Dan Reeves had called me and said, you know, we, we'd like to have you back. Chan Gailey was the offensive coordinator. He said, hey, what I'd like to do is kind of bring you back and you coach the quarterbacks. I thought about that and I said, hey, what an opportunity, you know, to you know, go back. And the only thing that was negative about it is, you know, Al told me when he fired me, he said, hey, he said, I'm not going to pay you the year and a half left on your contract if you go back to Denver. I said, well, you can't do that. I said, I, well, I got, you're firing me. I said, I, why would you keep me from going back to Denver? You don't want me here. And he said, no, you don't understand. He said, you can go any place. If you go any place, he said, I'll pay you the remainder of your contract. You go to Denver, I won't pay you. Uh, so I went to Denver and he never did pay me. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've learned from every organization I've been with. Uh, one thing that I did learn that I was not gonna take a head coaching job unless I felt like I could control my own destiny. And that was a big thing, that I could have a say with coaching staff, different people I wanted to hire. And I felt like if I ever was offered a head coaching job again, that I'd make sure that I'd be able to make those decisions. You know, when I came back, you know, Dan and John never had a great relationship. It was a very stormy relationship. And I kind of felt like I was kind of the middle man between both of them, because I got along great with Dan. I had a good relationship with John. They didn't always see eye to eye. So after the 91 season, there was an article that came out in Denver and Dan got a little bit mad at me that I would let an article like that hit the newspaper. And what I did is I brought in John and I said, hey John, tell Dan why you don't like him and Dan, you tell John why you don't like him. Conversation went on for about 30 minutes and I knew my, my days were numbered. <laughs> I was cut loose as after the AFC championship game. And we had lost to Buffalo 10 to seven. There was two jobs open, Pittsburgh and uh, San Francisco, and interviewed at both places and wound up going to San Francisco. When I interviewed with George, one of the reasons I think I was offered the job, you know, he was saying that our philosophies were very similar. You know, they wanted to run a West Coast offense and they had film that went back uh, probably 10 years on all their offensive meetings. I was there like for four months without my family, so what I did for those four months is, you know, just study what they had done. And George, being a defensive guy, gave me the opportunity to run the offense. And it was a great situation for me. We had a bunch of great players. You know, you got Jerry Rice and John Taylor. And you have a guy like Steve Young being your quarterback that was a fierce competitor. To be put in that environment was a dream come true for any coach. The best thing that ever happened to me was going to San Francisco, being around an organization that had won five Super Bowls in you know, less than 15 years, and seeing that organization work from the inside out, from pro personnel to free agents to college evaluations, from a philosophy on offense, defense, and special teams. What made that organization tick?
we're on a 10 yard line and we're going out of the end zone and Al is about the 25 or 30 yard line out in the numbers just with his hands folded and you know watching our team and the players say hey coach we can't we can't run anything over there tell them to get out of the way I go guys hey don't lose your poise you kind of just you just work on what we're doing and then I didn't want to do this as Steve Young because I know Steve Young would look at me like it was half crazy but I, I said Elvis I said hey I said, throw a go route. And if you happen to get the ball close to that guy in the white outfit over there, I said, you won't bother me. And Alvis throws it right at Al. Al's not moving. Now we've got a wide receiver and a DB running right at him, but Al must be looking at the interior play at the line. I'm saying, oh my God, I just want to scare him. I don't want to kill him. And at the last second, he just gets out of the way and he runs out of the way, he's not hurt, and he flips me off. <laughs> flips me off back to the huddle because he probably knew where it came from. But from that time on, I've never seen him on that side of the 50. <laughs> <laughs> The first two years, you know, we lost to Dallas, you know, two years in a row in the NFC Championship game. That was tough finally winning that NFC Championship game and coming home was a Super Bowl. Having been there three times, and then finally winning was, was a dream come true. Right after the game, you know, Pat showed up at the hotel. He snuck in and he was disguised. He thought Eddie would throw him out. But I wasn't gonna just take a job to take a job. I was gonna take a job under my terms. Uh, which I was luckily enough to get the second time I came back to Denver. This is a long-term commitment. Mike Shanahan will have full control of football operations. Thank God. That's what I want him to do. So it's, it's my great, great pleasure to introduce the new head coach of the Denver Broncos, Mike Shanahan. Do we see a different type of coach in any way in your years with me? Oh, God, we see a different type of coach. I'll actually be able to talk to you and not get in trouble, so that's one plus. I'll be able to diagram plays and actually talk to you after practice. That's another plus. So, yeah, there will be some changes. I think I'll be able to be myself. You know, there was some limitations there. Mr. Boland wants a head coach to run the organization, and one person has the control, but it's not the way it sounds. I'm going to ask a lot and demand a lot from my coaches and at the same time from the personnel. Hey, keep the pressure on now, keep the pressure on. Don't let up. Everybody in this organization is gonna to have to pull their load and at the same time, everybody will be treated with a lot of respect. And I think if you got a lot of people going the right direction, you got a chance to have success. Way to hang in there, partner. Way to hang in there, partner. That's what you gotta do, you gotta find a way to get it done. The last preseason game was Jacksonville, and we started Terrell Davis, and we wanted to see how good this guy was. And then after he played in that Jacksonville game, we knew we had our starter. Here's the toss to Davis. Hit it, hit it. And he was so deceptive, he could run through a guy. Back to the middle, bounces off, in the clear. And he had the speed, especially in that second half, to outrun people. The first year, we were 8-8, eight and, eight, and our offense wound up being number one. Defensively, we were middle of the pack. Come on, come on, put some pressure. There you go. So we made some strides defensively. Yeah. But you know, you're not going to win championships unless you get a good defense. What's up, Bono? Hey, so much. Hanging in there, baby. Hanging in there. A lot of people didn't give us a chance because we were an 818. And our schedule was pretty good too. You know, we didn't have a dominant schedule. Elfer looks that way. It's picked off. Yeah! Yeah! I love Braxton. He's gone. We had, uh, I think, 17 out of our 22 starters were either uh, cut or free agents or drafted like the, from the sixth round on. So a lot of guys that were overachievers that they had something to prove. That's all right. It'll be wide open. A wide open. Here's the third down play. Elway passing. McCaffrey makes. What a great catch. Oh, so, you know, to finish up that year 13 and 3 and get to the playoffs, have home field advantage was where we were hoping to be.
I really thought I gave ourselves a bad offensive game plan. Too much shotgun and settling our players play. So we got beat, and we got beat by a team that played better than we did. It was the biggest loss in the history of the organization because we had so much at stake. But there's nothing you could do about it except get ready for the next season and go, go fight again. And, you know, that's why I looked at it. So the season had had such great high hopes and a Bronco team that, for the most part of the year, led the NFL in record will come to a close here on this divisional playoff game. This one is history. It was my second year. We made some strides from an 8-8 season to 13-3. Just missed an opportunity. You know, I talked about uh, having home field advantage and winning the AFC West, and uh, I, our team felt pretty good about what we accomplished. And I, I think I made a mistake there, where the next year I said, guys, I don't care if we come in, we win the AFC West, I don't care if we got home field advantage. I said, it doesn't matter. So I want to get in the playoffs. So we're getting the playoffs, we got the football team to win the Super Bowl. Woo! Smoking. I do remember playing Jacksonville again in that first uh, home playoff game, and I said, okay, this is the biggest game I've ever been involved with. I said, we've got to win this game. Uh, the team knew what was at stake. They bring six, L.A. dumps it, and here goes Rod Smith, 30, 20, you can forget it! You know, we were ready for Jacksonville, and Jacksonville was a very good football team. Touchdown, Denver! Oh, we got what we want. Got hand off, Davis running left side, breaks the tackle, here we go, TD, 30, 25, 20. Time that you miss out on an opportunity and you got to think about it for a year and you got basically the same team coming back. You know, players weren't going to be the night. Love this, baby. I love this. Revenge is so sweet. Monday will be the day off, or would you guys rather have tomorrow off? Just joking, this isn't a democracy anyhow. <laughs> Those fans were just crazy. I felt whoever won that game would win the Super Bowl. I knew it was a game that if we threw the football as many times as we did in the past, that we would lose that game. There you go! So we had to beat them up physically. Put right F short, 18 Bob on it. It's third and about six inches for a touchdown. Here's the play of the game. And the lead for the Denver Broncos. Keep going right up the middle. Pass to the right side, right side. Hand off Davis, right side. Terrell squares his shoulders. Touchdown, Denver. I remember it was 14-10, and then Kansas City comes down, you know, back with that drive. And the clock continues to run, 43-42. It can't move quickly enough for the Broncos. Now they got to go for the end zone. Kerback has them up at the line of scrimmage. The clock is running. For the end zone. We had some guys step up, make some plays. This is the game. Flare it! Flare it! Flare it! Kerback, plenty of time. Come on! Into the end zone. Pass is going to be knocked away! Once we beat Kansas City in Kansas City, uh, we had a chance to uh, do something special. Denver returns to the AFC Championship game. They'll be in Pittsburgh next Sunday. The winner will go to the Super Bowl. Go, TD. I felt like we had a good chance to win the game. I know Pittsburgh, an excellent football team. No second chances, but let's light it up. Let's go, uh, let's go sprint right up. And it is hot. Hit it. There you go. Elway, roll right. There you go. Fires the end zone. Touchdown. Okay. Great job, John. It was one of those days where our defense really stepped up. Don't get scared, baby. Got a few turnovers at crucial times and kept them out of the end zone. Into the end zone. Pass can be intercepted. Yeah. Intercepted in the end zone. A terrible throw on Allen Aldridge with a diving pick. Boom. Right to him. I do remember at the end of the game, the momentum had switched. Where you could feel the game kind of changing. This place is going nuts. Two minutes left, third and six for Denver at the Bronco 15-yard line. They lead 24-21. And John hit Shannon Sharp on a five-yard hook pass. That took the win out of their sails, and we were able to control the rest of the clock. First down on the 30-yard line, Shannon Sharp. Denver goes to the Super Bowl. Right. They are the AFC champion. Oh, a lot of play. 60 minutes. 
It was one of those dreams that you know, hoping you can get there. But I'd been there three AFC uh, championship games and I had lost three Super Bowls. So you know, you take a look at it and you're saying, hey, there's only one team that's happy at the end of the season. So you know, it was one of those things you felt good about, but you hadn't obviously gotten the prize yet. The next one is a whole lot sweeter. Congratulations. <laughs> We got to give a thanks to the guy that makes all this possible. He pulls all the strings. He makes sure we have chicken. We spend the best quarters around. We fly first class. Let's put it to the mastermind, Mr. Mike Shanahan. Well, I really got it from San Francisco when I went there. I, I thought it was a great teaching tool. I, I don't really watch it unless I want to take a look at a, at a defensive meeting because I'm always in the offensive meetings. I don't want to go in there and people say, oh, God, something's got to be wrong with the defense because Mike's in here. So if I want to look at it, I have a camera. But what it does is it really just isolates on the coach and what's being presented. That's what key protection is. It gives you a key number. Okay, but key protection is a five-man pickup. You know, so you can't true. see if somebody's sleeping no, in the no. corner or something. I wish I could. <laughs> I'd have to have cameras all around the room. They were a good football team. Statistically, offense and defense, they were as good as it gets. And it's one of those things that you want to lay low. You want to start talking until it's over. Okay, we'll just wait. How are you? All I remember is coming to the sideline saying, hey, coach, you know, I got a headache. I said, a headache in the Super Bowl? I mean, how can you have a headache in the Super Bowl? And, of course, I didn't know anything about migraines. What's that? Okay, just do this. You don't worry about seeing on this place because we're going to fake it to you, the 15 lead. But if you're not in there, they won't believe we're going to run the ball, okay? That shows you what a trooper he was to go in there. He couldn't even see and went in there. It kind of gives you an idea what he's made of. I've been told my compassion isn't very high uh, after that situation. It was one of those situations that we had scouted on the one-yard line. Green Bay would sell out for the run. Even buzzer just, come on! Just be cover eight, please. Yes, it is. All right. I was afraid if TD wasn't in there, they may say, hey, you know, if another running back's in there, they're going to try to throw it. Vintage John Elway there, and the 37-year-old making it happen with his legs. Great move. So no, great. Blue 58! We just felt that you know, we were a very tough physical football team. Atwater's got ball! Ball free! Ball free! That should be the Broncos' ball! Yes, sir! Denver has it! If we could hang in there in the fourth quarter and wear them down because they were a better football team, and if we could stay consistent, you know, running the ball, we could wear them out and hopefully win it in the fourth quarter. Nice hold there. 50, 10, 5, TD to the one! Strong right tight zoom, F left. If not, we stay in I right and go Fox 3, I right tight. They're in base, I right tight, Fox 3 run. And the hearts are pounding in Denver. Elway, long count. Davis, and it, it is a rocking standing up. Can you say Denver is in the lead? Play like you always do. A lot of fun. Yeah, whatever you would do, Norm. Come on! Come on! Let's go, do it again! Let's go! Help, they play your man, run them off. It was one of those scenarios where, you know, Brett's got the ball. Super Bowl. We finally get him to a, you know, a fourth and short. This is it. Come on. And go. You know, we bring the house, and John Mobley steps in front, knocks that ball down. Oh, yeah. You know, everything you've been working for is there. We're the world champs. Great world champs. Hey, great job, boy. It doesn't get any better. Great job, boy. Good job. And I'm just kind of sitting there and my kids come up and find me and, you know, hug them and I'm just kind of sitting there not knowing what to do and finally somebody gets me after about five minutes and, hey coach, you're supposed to go up there. I'm so proud of you. You know, you know how good that nice ring's going to look on your finger. Being a part of that scenario, coming in when I was 31 years old and to see John go through, you know, the Super Bowl losses on the Jacksonville game and to see him hold up that trophy was, was pretty special. How you doing? Good, Good luck, luck here. Thank you very much.
After you've been in the NFL for a while, you develop relationships, you know, with these officials where you get to know a guy where you really respect the job that he does. Good job. I wasn't sure if you caught that one. Thanks. Or one guy that you don't respect. You, twice. That you say, hey, remember the last time you were here, these are the three situations that we talked about during the game, and you said you were right. Well, you were right on one, you were wrong on two. Two. I mean, sooner or later, got it. He was off the line over on that side. It's my job to talk to the officials if something's going wrong. Jim, hey, hey, Jim, listen to me, Jim. He grabbed them. He grabbed them before the ball was there. You were watching the ball. You were watching the ball, Jim. He grabbed them. I know that. You know that. You let him grab them when the ball had already gone by. Good by. It went by him. The ball had already been by him and on the ground. That's why I passed him. Jim, it's not even close. He was out of bounds. Look at the replay. Come on. You gotta make the call. You're in the Super Bowl. Got Hey, Ron. It's gotta go two ways now. Hey, we've only had eight penalties, and it's only one quarter. Well, a lot of times I just want to know what they were thinking, what the rule was. They explain who did what. What I saw was the guy was already down, was prostrate, and he came in with his head and forearm. That's not what it looked like there on the uh, deal. That's he's back. He's behind the rear end. In the heat of the moment, a lot of times you'll say something, and you'll look at the film, and you say, you know, I was wrong. So I'll go back to that guy and say, hey, you were right, I was wrong, I apologize. He's going up for the play. Uh, 25 yards down. I'm covering five yards behind the umpire. Oh, I, I, it's my mistake, then it was learned. My mistake. Yeah. My mistake. Good call. Some guys you got the utmost respect for because you watch them, you know how good they are. And very seldom are they wrong. Did you call that, Mike? Did you call that? That's a good call. Then you have other guys. And you've looked in the last three or four times they've had you, and they've got four or five mistakes. He's holding them! Sometimes I'll call out a guy saying, hey, you know, that was just like the other one. You missed it. You missed the call. You've got to be sure, and you called it. I thought it was out of bounds. I know you did. I know you did. You wouldn't have called it. I hope you wouldn't have called it. But, you know, I didn't know either until, I mean, he was really extended. I mean, that was a tough call, but he was in. Now, let me ask you this. The guy never touched him in the mouth. According well, I'd like to go back and tell that guy, hey, remember that he could have won either way? He, and he'll say, yeah, you're right. And then I tell you, I apologize, coach. If you can have that type of communication during the game, he'll say, oh, maybe I blew it, but this is what I saw. Mike, I did see it. I wouldn't have called it, coach. What you're doing is keeping the line of communications open. Don. Don. It's trying to make them think that, hey, you got to perform at a certain level, too. Hey, Don, you got to talk to me sometime. Hey, Don, he went and waved his hand. It showed it on the replay. He waved it. From where I was, he put it straight up. I know, but you know, this is a Super Bowl. And then you don't look at it good enough, and then he waves it, and you call. And this is a Super Bowl. I realize that, but if I don't have an invalid signal and they come down and hit him, I've got But don't you got to make sure that it's... I made sure. Don, I'm not lying to you. Hey, go down there and talk to Jim Gray and ask him about the late hit by Alfred. He's down there in the 20-yard. You know who Jim Gray is? Go ask him. Bad call. Bad call. Hey, Bill. You saw you say Ron at halftime, they said it was one of the worst calls that they've seen for a late hit. They understand the pressure that you're under. That's the difference in winning and losing a game. You know, I understand the pressure they're under because they get evaluated just like we do. I want you to know this. I'm not saying this, but on replay they said you were full of... No way did he touch him to seven yards down the field, then they cut it off. They said horrible call. They handle it pretty good, though. Those officials are good. You can't make it up. I didn't make it up, Coach. They just said, they just said it wasn't in the face. This place is loud. They start up in the line of scrimmage, blitz is on, gain a short drop, Ed Waters got him, shot, yeah! and the Broncos are going to win their 13th straight of the year. All right. Terrell Davis oh. hit it, hit it, hit it. takes the hand oh. up, running left, Terrell breaks a tackle, yeah. he's got it, oh. there it is, oh. All right. Terrell Davis, he has just become only the fourth player in NFL history to go over 2,000 yards in a 
single season. And the Denver Broncos are going back to the Super Bowl. They are AFC champions for the second consecutive year. <laughs> All right, hey, way to go. Great job, baby. Hey, who would have thought that four years ago to be going against the Super Bowl? Oh, I know. I know, hey. I, I thought it was very ironic. You know, first of all, for Atlanta to go in there and beat Minnesota, not many people thought that could happen. It's up and it's going. Going. The Falcons are going to the yes. Super Bowl. And then for us going back with, you know, all the history that we had, I knew it was going to be a media circus. There's always things in the back of your mind that uh, you wish would have worked out differently. You know, Dan had to make a tough decision back then. As a head coach, you have to make a lot of tough decisions. That's part of this game. You know, I was here for seven years with Dan. In those seven years, we went to three Super Bowls, an AFC championship game, a 13-3 season, 11-5 season, and a 5-11 season. So there's a lot of great experiences. Uh, and that's what I look at. I look at the good times and the opportunity he gave me. And, you know, he's, he's had a lot of success where he's been outside of Denver. And uh, obviously, we've had some too. Had the best coach in the NFL, period. <laughs> yeah, yeah, period. Uh, we got a sign. <laughs> Super Bowl 33 is underway. Well, I thought we were a better football team. We've been practicing this all week. Chandler drops straight back pressure, and he's down. I thought if we did what we needed to do, you know, we had a chance to dominate the game. Boss, right side, bounce deep as Anderson. He's in trouble, and the Broncos have him. Yeah! Big, big play by the Bronco defense. <laughs> I thought we could run, and I thought we could throw. Was this a safety right here with the zone dog? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, they're going out Bradford over there. Okay. Well, that'll be great because if they do that, and we do go with our arrow or something, they're dead. I want to go uh, near left with a uh, C counter motion. Bang 19 hand quarterback key pass right X pole. Red 28. Oh, it's gonna be wide open. It is gonna be wide open. 28 head. Come on. Elway boots and rolls to his right, stops, loads it up, throws down deep the middle of the field. Rod Smith's got it! Go ahead! Here we go! 30, yeah. 20, 15, 10, 5! Rod Smith, Denver, touchdown! Okay! Let's go, let's bury him now, bury him! Elway with an empty back go, runs a quarterback draw, lunges to the goal line, he is in! Yeah! Touchdown, John Elway! Elway now is going to leave the game, his helmet is off, both arms extended in the air, and if it's not his last game, it sure seems like it. Love you. Oh, great job. Oh, thank you. Thank you, bud. I think your family knows how hard it is to get there, you know, through the highs and lows of your profession. It just doesn't happen, and, you know, when it does happen, you gotta enjoy the moment. You gotta help her out. I don't, I'm not any better now, does it? How are you doing, all right? <laughs> Thanks. That was super, wasn't it? Yeah. There you go. I think that's my demeanor all the time, so I think that's where I am. Rod, we're walking around out there. We're walking around as a team. Tell those guys to get their ass going. What can I say? I'm just kind of serious all the time, a little bit too intense. But that's me. I don't think ruthless is the word. I think being honest is, is more the word. I think sometimes people have a hard time looking somebody in the eye and saying, hey, this is what I think. You may not like it. Uh, we are going to make a change at the quarterback position. Uh, Brian Greasy will now be our starter, and Bubby Brisser will now be on the second team. Sooner or later, you got to make some hard decisions that are in the best interest of everybody within your organization. You're going to be our starter, but i got to give him a chance. I gotta get something going, so I'm gonna take you out. A lot of different opinions from a lot of different people. People pay a lot of attention to it. In our situation, we got two newspapers that compete against each other, so there's always gonna be different angles, but if you don't like it or you can't take it, then you shouldn't be in it. No, I always say that a guy gets burned out when he's financially secure and he doesn't have to work anymore. That's, you know, you never hear assistant coaches having burnout, do you? <laughs> You know, they gotta, they, they gotta work, they gotta put food on the table. I enjoy what I'm doing. Uh, maybe someday I'll be in that uh, situation where I'm saying that I have burnout because I would rather play golf. Well, you have money in the bank. 
why, why, why don't you think it's, it's been a pleasure? You now have the money. I'm not very good at golf. <laughs> You a little scared? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, you look a little scared. I'm scared of what we're going to do to them other than that. Every year you're going to lose players, you know, you're going to lose free agents, and you're going to have acquisitions from the draft and other free agents, and you got to mesh that team together. Let's go 52. Go have some fun today. We're looking for unselfish guys that they might not make the Pro Bowl, but we got a chance to win the final game of the year. This is what the NFL is all about. It's real simple. Win, man. That's it, that's win. That's when we it. come in the locker room, ain't nothing else on your mind physical, but baby. just winning the football game. It's a year by year. You know, if, if you play poorly, like for us, you know, we haven't won a playoff game six years after our Super Bowl. You know, we've been to three playoffs and we've gotten embarrassed by any. You know, it, it's tough because the standard's high. So, you know, you either run from it or you embrace it and you try to go on and improve. Hey, Scotty, welcome to the NFL. Oh! Oh, no. This is a hard profession. It's not easy. There's a lot of work that goes into it, and there's so many people involved. Well, the side, you just can't sit there with a corner in front of you. You have to love what you do, and you can't be afraid of it because it's a pretty competitive atmosphere. Fourth and less than one. Going for it. Going for it. Give me eye right, 32 pitch left. This is a huge play in the 2002 season opener. Portis, left side 40. Come on. Portis has got a big, big gain on fourth and a foot. And I really enjoy the game. I enjoy the competition. Solo right, zoom, F right, two jet flank to drive scissors. A chance to go against the best weekend, week out. Here we go. Solo right, zoom, F right, two jet flank to drive scissors. On two, ready, stay set now. You got to have a few things go for you. Phenomenal catch by Rod Smith. Big time play by a big time player. All right. You gotta have a lot of leadership on your football team that finds a way to win those close games. We just gotta buckle down, guys. They're trying to get to third and short. They get to third down, we just gotta get off the field. Let's do it right here, okay? Third down in a jumbo backfield now. A train tries to get outside. He's gonna be pulled on down to the 40 a loss. And John Lynch, red run all the way. You gotta be a little bit lucky. He'll never have an easier score than that. You're always trying to put those ingredients together. Solo right nasty, pass, 18 handoff solid, Z Deep Circus, X post. Well, I, we might have it. We might have it. They might be doing it with Sam on the ball. They are. It's going to be wide open. Sometimes you get it done, other times you don't. But if you don't have high expectations, if you don't believe you can get there and the players don't believe, usually you have no chance. That is an 80 yard touchdown. I know. Great job. One of the great things that I think has happened to us is that, you know, anything less than winning the Super Bowl is, is not very good. Any time a head coach wins 100 games in less than 10 seasons with one football team, he's an elite company, believe me. I don't know very much. I think what you have to do, is, which is pretty tough, is you, you've got to enjoy, you know, the moment. I just want to do it because I know they're going to zone blitz us and I think they'll play as tough. I think this is a touchdown, I really do. They think as you get into this game, your expectation level is so high that you really don't enjoy the wins because you expect to win. Home run ball for the lead on the right side. That pass is caught! And that is a dip yeah. touchdown! The losses can be devastating. So what I try to do is enjoy the wins more and just don't look at the long range because if you do that all the time, it, it's really hard to have fun. Go ahead, run it! Take it, take it. Throws for Lee. Back of the end zone. Lee's got it. And that is a Denver touchdown. Barley, we needed one of those. Great job. Good job, man. 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 You've got to have a plan. You've got to believe in your plan. You know, you've won before. You know what it takes to win. This is a game that you compete, but uh, you got to enjoy yourself.